Hello, and welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a little different because what I want to do is simply tell you a story. And I think one of the best ways to learn another language is to listen to native speakers tell stories. And the way I learn Italian is a lot through stories. There's this guy named, there's this guy named Ollie Richards. There's this guy named Ollie Richards, and he has a lot of these short story books that I learn Italian through short stories. He's a big believer in that. And I think that can really help you learn another language is if you just listen to somebody, native speaker, ideally, just tell a story. And it can be somewhat interesting, but then you will pick up on a lot of the ways native language speakers speak. I've never really done anything like this on the channel, so this is a first. If you like it, please leave a comment saying you liked it. If you didn't, just tell me, Brent, this is a bad idea. Never do this again. And I'm sitting off to the side because just in case there is anything rather difficult that I introduce or that I need to break down, I will throw up a picture or put the text that might help you out. But for the most part, I'm just gonna tell you a story like I would a friend. And of course, you all are my friends. So this morning, um, it was pretty early, about six o'clock in the morning, and I was studying my Italian like a good little boy with my phone. I had my AirPods in, and suddenly I heard this loud bang and the power went off. And I've been living in this house for about eight years, and this has happened three times before. And each time when this happened, I knew, oh man, we might not have power for quite a while. It sounded like a transformer blue. And those are, I'll put a picture up, but those are like little bucket things at the top of our power lines. And Aroni, you may know him from the live streams. He asked me once, why don't you guys bury those power lines? And I was like, it's too cold here. During the winter, if our power lines are buried, the ground often expands and contracts because of the water inside and it would just destroy the power lines. So unfortunately, we have to look at them all the time. They're ubiquitous, they're all over the place. I probably wouldn't say ubiquitous in a normal conversation, but since I made a video about it, it might be a little review for some people. So. I was like, yeah, we can't bury those things. And unfortunately, that means we have to look at them all the time. And if there is a storm, one of those transformers might blow. And I've seen a transformer blow a couple times. It does make that really loud sound that I heard this morning. And it often throws out this violent purple light, which is cool to see. But also, you know that like there's electricity flowing from there. So I don't want to be anywhere near what is happening at the time. A couple years ago, a squirrel, unfortunately, found his way up into the transformer and cooked himself and uh, his little body lay on my neighbor's grass for a little while. But every time that we lose power, it's probably because a transformer blows. So the first thing I did was I texted my sister-in-law. She doesn't live that far from me. She lives actually right up the street. And so I know that she wakes up early like I do. And my family, they were all still sleeping. I figured my brother might be sleeping. Remember, my sister-in-law is my brother's wife. And their son is my nephew. But when you hear in-law, that means family through marriage. So I texted my sister-in-law and I was like, do you guys have power? And she was like, no. Actually, let me just stop the story for a second. My sister actually, my sister-in-law actually did have power. But one thing I'm doing there is I'm saying he was like, she was like, we often do this in the United States for when we are saying they said, when we are telling a story and we're talking about what another person said. So be on the lookout for that. I did that when I talked about Aroni. I said he was like, and then I'm with my sister-in-law now texting her and I'm like, she was like, so we love like, we love like. So I texted my sister-in-law. I said, do you have 
uh, power. And she was like, no, no, she had power. She had power. Why do I keep saying no? She was like, yes, we have power. And so that was a concern for me. Usually when the power goes out in the whole neighborhood, that's a good sign because our power company, it's called CMP. It's an acronym, stands for Central Main Power. They will get an alert and they will come fix the power pretty quickly. But if it was just my house, I was a little worried. So I heard one of my neighbors talking outside and I went out and checked with him. He was letting his dogs out and he was like, no, we don't have power either. So that made me feel a little better. If it was just my house, I thought, ah, the power company might not really care too much and it might take longer for me to get my power back. But since he didn't have power, that was a good sign. And then my neighbor across the street, he's 90 years old. He doesn't hear very well. He was asking us, do you guys have power? And we we're like, no, we don't have any power. And I thought he understood us, but later on in the store, I'll find out that he doesn't. So I went back inside and um, my sister-in-law had texted again. She was like, have you checked with CMP's website? And I was like, no, I will, I will. But she had already done it for me. And she said, well, there are four people on your street that don't have power. And I think it was like 16 on the next street, which was good. So I thought, okay, so they know, and hopefully they will be coming to fix that power pretty soon. But back when Jamie and I were in our 20s, we didn't lose power. There's a difference. When you lose power, it's not your fault. You lose electricity, but maybe it's a storm. Maybe it's just an old transformer that blew up. We had our power cut off. That's a little different. But back in the day, Jamie and I in our 20s or so, like most people in their 20s, we were still in college. Uh, we were working part-time jobs. We didn't have a whole lot of money. And we forgot to pay our bill a couple times, at least once I remember, and um, the power was cut off. So that's when the power company says, yeah, you're not paying us, so goodbye electricity. One time it was, it was Halloween. I remember this very vividly. It was Halloween, my neighbor's lights were on. We lived in an apartment, but my neighbor's lights were on. Ours were off, eh, we weren't home. We kept the lights off to save electricity, to save money uh, anyway. So, but when we walked in, flipped on the light, nothing happened. So I knew our power had been cut off and we had to go, um, we didn't, our phone didn't work either, I don't think at the time. So maybe we had to borrow a neighbor's phone and we had to call the power company. They were like, yeah, you, you didn't pay the bill. So we were like, well, we wanna pay it now. We have the money, we want electricity. And they told us, yeah, well, you have to pay a, a reconnection fee, a reconnection fee. So re, meaning again, connect. So we couldn't pay our bill in the first place. And then we had to pay our bill, of course. And then you have to pay a reconnection fee I think it was like $25 for them to turn our power back on, which is really a slap in the face because we could barely afford the power in the first place. We paid that, but then we had to pay extra money because we had missed our payment. But anyways, so um, I went back in, started studying my Italian. I didn't need the power for that, but I was worried that the rest of my family who were still sleeping, they wouldn't be able to sleep because we have a lot of white noise in our house. We have a dehumidifier that is going, that's trying to get rid of all the water in the air in our basement, because sometimes it can get a little wet down there in the summer and we don't want mold to form. So we have a, humid, D, a dehumidifier going on. Humid, it has something to do with water. So if you need more water in your house, you might put in what's called a humidifier which will add water, which sometimes we have to do in the winter because the heat that we run, it actually dries the air out. So we have to pay electricity in the winter to have more water in the air. So we run a humidifier. And in the summer, we run a dehumidifier. So that's running and there's some nice white noise as a bee flies by. What's up with the bees around here? As a nice white noise is flowing through it helps us sleep a little bit better, just have that constant noise in the background. And also each of the rooms that we sleep in, Jamie and I have a room, 
we have a big box fan going. And my daughter in her room, she has a big box fan going. And my son also has a big box fan going. So it's, it's awesome at night because you can just sleep and just hear that noise. And it's very good sleeping. Unfortunately, I think somebody could probably rob us and we'd never know they were in the house. But anyway, so that had all stopped and it was still early. And I was worried that the rest of my family would, would wake up, but they didn't. And then I see the CMP truck go by and he, this, this man who's driving by has a bucket truck. I'll put a picture of what a bucket truck is, but that's really good because it allows him to get high up and fix the transformer. But I, I looked out the window and my neighbor, my older neighbor comes out and flags the truck down and says, hey, hey, am I the only one that, uh, that has lost power? And I know that my neighbor and I had told him before but he's an older man and he may not have heard us. I know his, his hearing isn't the best. So, but I was thinking to myself, like just let them go fix the job so we can get power back more quickly. But he, he starts talking to him. Luckily it wasn't a very long conversation, but the man was like, no, 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 sir. We're, we're trying to get power. There are other people without power. And he drove off and luckily in like five minutes after that, like literally five minutes after, the power popped back on. So all is good, all is good. The problem in my state where I live, at least my house, is that my heat runs on electricity and so does our air conditioners. They run on electricity. It's cold this morning, so I didn't have to worry about the air conditioning, but it is a big problem in the winter if I lose power because that means my heat doesn't work. The heat comes from the electricity. And when that is out, like it gets cold in my house. Our plan, if that ever happens, would be to go up to my brother's house because he has a, a wood stove. That obviously doesn't need electricity to heat up your house. But a problem we would have to worry about in the winter is our pipes bursting. So think about it. You have like the pipes. And I know if you live in a cold area, my neighbor's dogs barking. If you live in a cold area, you probably already know this, like Ukraine or Russia. But if um, you live in like Brazil, you might not know this because it might not get so cold. But the pipes, right, right here, the pipes, and then you have the water going through. That could be a dirty hand signal in some places. So you have the water going through. And if you lose power, the water will just sit there. And if it's really cold, it will freeze. And you know what happens when water freezes, it expands and that could burst your pipes. And that would be um, not fun at all. It would cost a lot of money to uh, get those fixed. Hopefully you can't hear that dog too much. But luckily it was, it was cool. The power was restored very quickly. Not much to worry about, but I thought it might've been a long day. When it got warmer, it might get a little hot and muggy in the house, but disaster was averted power was back on in about 30, 40 minutes. If you enjoyed this story, think about subscribing. There are a couple silver members that I would like to thank for joining, giving them a shout out. We got Sam, the Taiwanese. Thank you so much. Gleb, welcome to the Silver Member Club. Amina Ali lives in Canada now. Welcome. And there are actually two Elenas and I'll flash their name up there. So thank you guys so much for joining. We got Rod and Jesus. Those are gold members. We've spoken on video uh, once before. We'll do it a couple times before the month is out. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I can do more of these if you'd like. If this was a total waste of your time, you're probably still not watching, right? You probably clicked off already. So I'm sorry about that. I'll never do it again. If, if this video sucks, I won't do it again. But if this video helped you with learning how a native English speaker might talk in the United States, you know, my story was a little rambling. I messed up a couple times, you know, it's all good, I hope. And I hope that maybe you uh, have turned on the subtitles. That might help a little bit. And maybe listen to it a couple times. That might help. And I will put this up on the podcast because besides a couple pictures, I think this could really help with your listening skills to hear how a native speaker talks when they're talking to uh, one of their friends. If you're looking for more English, take a look right up there. That's a slang video. 
that has slang videos from all across YouTube. Bob the Canadian is on there. And down below is uh, some listening comprehension practice, which I might put this video on that playlist because I think this can really help with your listening comprehension. But a little more relaxed video today. If you like it, let me know, thumbs up, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.